how will you spend your allotted time God has given to each of you? Each of one of us has been given a portion of a substance from God called time. Called time. So when we are busy with our lives, working hard to make ends meet, we don't really have time to think other things, especially to evaluate how you have gone so far. So you don't have time because you are so busy with your day-to-day -day life. But if you are among the few who periodically evaluate your track record, you are within the minority. You are within the minority. If you are within the uh, uh, so, uh, very few people who evaluate your life, how you will spend your allotted, allotted time. Everybody got, got time, right? Everybody got 24 hours a day. So everybody got time. Everybody got a portion of time. And how are you going to, to use it? So do you know this, however, that the minority were gems written in the Bible, how they live their lives? Always. If you see, uh, like the Jerusalem uh, was built by the remnants, the remnants, the small thing, the remnants, the minority, the, the small group of people. So we, uh, never be, uh, the world is never led by a majority. It's always by the minority, by the, by the, by the small people, the core people, the small people, small group of people. And are you the one who are in the minority who are thinking about how you spend your, your, your a lot of time that God has given to you? Others may, you can. You, want, you, um, you heard about that saying. Others may, you can. So, um, heroes in the Bible are just ordinary, ordinary people who exceptionally stay focused in their lifetime. They are exception. So they have this, this, uh, this uh, philosophy. So if, if other people in the world, they do some weird stuff, they enjoy, just enjoy life, but they have their vision. So they have, okay, that's okay. Because others may, you can. Others may, you can. So, for instance, uh, if you are if you are in the um, in college, uh, if you have lunch break, do you pray? Do you pray during lunch? Who prays during lunch? When you are in college, okay. if you are pray, uh, if if you pray probably during lunch, in college, probably you are minority probably. Uh, do you do you drink in, in, in college? Do you drink? So. Others may, but you can't. Why? Because you have a vision. Others may do that, but you can't. You, uh, you stay focused with your vision that you don't have time for these things. You stay focused in your, in your, in your vision because the time is so valuable. It's, the time is so precious. It's just a small time, a small amount of of time, how do you want to live it? So that you, you don't waste your time just drinking and, um, uh, and be merry. So you will stay focused. That's why I, I call it others may, but you can. Others may, you can. So if, even if you, you think, I'm, I'm not like the other one. So people think that, uh, so, for instance, in, in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a corporate uh, Christmas party, in a, in a company called Christmas party, and everybody drink, and they, they just, a, just, a, just a, a party, and, and uh, they call it happy hours, right? They, they call it happy hours. You know that happy hours is only for the unhappy people? <laughs> they call it happy hours because um, they are, they, um, they, they just uh, drink, uh, 
drink and drink, and, and when, when they ask you, what do you want to drink? So you have a choice. But uh, oftentimes, we just drink something that is, uh, is not liquor. So others may, you can. Because you have a vision. You have a vision in your life. Um, Noah, I, I want to pick up this, uh, this, this family. Noah, and he was a minority also. He had three sons, Sam, Ham, and Javed, and three daughters-in-law. Eight people, even in Chinese character, when they try to, the old Chinese character, I heard that they want to describe uh, art, they write it uh, with, with the letter, with, with the eight. Is that right? Uh, Tante Mary? Yeah, so that's the old. Um, so they, they want to describe a big, a big boat. They have an eight within, that, uh, uh, within that, that character, the Chinese character. So these are minority. People who knows their a lot of time were considered strange people. Why not just enjoy life, just eat, drink, and be merry like the others? Something that no one was convinced but the society, the people around him thought this old person was strange. He built an ark at the top of the mountain. That's strange, right? Usually, when, when, when you uh, build the ark, you build, you build a boat near the coast. But he built it on the top of the mountain. For 120 years, he built the ark. People thought he was crazy, wasting his time. Why 120 years? You remember that uh, there is a one word in, 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 in Genesis 6-3. The Lord said his days will be 120 years. At, at that time, people lived very, very long, long, long life, like 300, 400, 900 years. But since that time, God said that his days will be 120 years. That's Genesis 6, 3. So, uh, Noah has to preach, uh, repent, repent, repent for 120 years. For 120 years. So why 120 years? Now you know that the, the lifespan of a person on earth is 120, 20, 120 years. So that means every year, every year of your life, you will be given chance to repent. That's the time of that time. Of, uh, you know, after that, after that, uh, after that flood, people all, only live about 120 years maximum. Moses died at 120 years. And right now, even right now, the maximum that we can live is probably, maximum is 120. There's no more people who, live, who can live 300 or 400 or 90, 900 years like, like the, the old people, the, 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 uh, our forefathers. God, uh, God said that the days will be 120 years. So that was given the time for 120 years. So every people on earth has been given 120 years to repent. But... God commanded, commanded Noah to build an ark. And we heard about the, the, the size. It's 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Noah has to spend years. When, 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 he, when, when uh, Noah heard that, that command, built like this, he knew nothing, right? Usually, people who got the vision, he has, he has to develop that vision. He has to learn. He has to study. No one, uh, Noah has to spend years to learn how to build an ark. He never built an ark. No one has ever built it. So he couldn't learn from somebody else. But he, need, he needs to learn. So he worked hard. When you have a vision, you will spend hours, days, years to prepare yourself. In the beginning, I, I said that uh, we have a lot of time. So you want to spend your time here to learn, to work hard, to focus on the vision that God gave, gave unto you. So, and of course, you need to 
completely trust the Lord. The Lord said, build an ark on the top of the mountain, on the, on the mountain top. You have to trust it. Otherwise, this is crazy. God is crazy, probably. So you, 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 you won't follow. So it, it, it demands a full 100% obedience and trust to the Lord to accomplish that goal. So without trust and obedience to the Lord, he will not prepare himself. Uh, I, uh, I was graduated from uh, uh, engineering. So I, I, I know about the, I, I don't know if you know about the, the, the word uh, buoyancy. Buoyancy is the, is the like a, uh, so that a, a, a ship or an ark can stay afloat. So that, that's called buoyancy. So he has to learn because there is no, no room for error. There's just only one, one time, just one time when the, when the, when the uh, water rise up and will lift that, lift that, that ship, it has, to, it has to be successfully launched and, uh, and float. Uh, I read on uh, one, one time, there is, this is a, uh, like a real, real story. There is a, a big, uh, there is a big uh, uh, ship just built. And then uh, they, they invite all the guests and then all the, they, they have a, a big uh, um, party, uh, inauguration, and then they, uh, they uh, 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 break the champagne and, and then they launch, the, they launch, they launch uh, that ship, still, still uh, dock at the docking station. And it and it launched. When it launched, it goes down. <laughs> it went down to the to the bottom of the sea. It's, it it didn't it didn't um, it couldn't float. So that's called when 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 they don't learn about buoyancy, they don't know that the, the ship needs to needs to have a certain uh, engineering wise. You have to do a, uh, something special so that when when you launch the boat. It will not go down, but it will it will stay afloat. So he learned buoyancy. So he learned. So when the water lifted the ark, it should remain afloat. Then there is no there is no um, margin of error. On that day, something different happened: rainstorm, torrent rain, and even the the earth spewing water, gushing water, never happened before and never will happen again. I heard. I heard uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, we heard about big uh, rainstorm in Philippines. And the, big, the, the rainstorm was just eight hours, but uh, uh, hundreds of people died. Just eight hours. And this, uh, during Noah, is 40 days and 40 nights. And it's not only rain, but from the water, spring water coming out, the ground gushing water out from, from the ground. So for 40 days and 40 nights, Verse 7 in, uh, from Genesis, uh, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. The earth was corrupt and full, full of violence, full of violence. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. He was not perfect, but he, he obeyed the Lord completely. So this is the story of Noah. I just pick up this because he is my heroes of faith, my hero of faith. He know, he, he got the, the vision from the Lord and he executed consistently for 120 years, preaching without ceasing for 120 years and he preached on deaf ears for 120 years. But then he learned, he worked hard. You know that uh, all men, are like grass. All men like grass. We understand. We are uh, understanding that a lot of times it is like it's it's like wind. It's like grass. First Peter one twenty four said, "All men are like grass, and all their glory is like flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. So while the flower blooms." You need to do something 
that is tangible, tangible for eternity. All men are like grass. So even if you, if you have uh, 10 degrees behind your name, all, the, all, the, all your degrees, just like grass. And the glory of that all the degree is just the flower the, that blooms and then the next hour just faded out. So we are like that. So the, the flower model shows temporariness. This is very, very temporary. It's so beautiful and so and blossoming like that, but it's so temporal. It's so temporary. You need to think about what is not temporal. How far you have spent your time. This is your time. Do you fill with all the glory of a grass? Do you fill with all the flower that blooms in the morning but then wither in the afternoon? Are you filling your time, the, the small allotted time in your life, just to, just to, uh, uh, just to do the, the temporal thing? You, probably you think, okay, I will be, I'll, I'll live 60 years or 80 years or 100 years. It's a long time. But it is still temporal. It's like the grass. And the glory that you achieve in this life is like flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. What do you have? You have a uh, Mercedes Benz. You have a uh, Lexus. You, you, uh, you, you probably paid a lot of money. You work very hard. You, you, you have a uh, diamond rings and all kinds of. Uh, you have a, um, a beautiful husband. You have a you have a uh, um, protection from your your dad. Um, you have a, a business empire you inherit from your dad. All these are temporal. This all the glory of this is like flowers that withers in the afternoon. To understand about the temporariness of flower in Texas. In Texas here, we have a blue bonnet season between March, between mid-March to May. So you can see it while you're driving. I, I remember all, all, every time we, 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 we drove to Austin or to a different places in Texas, even just exit of my, um, uh, from Francewood to, to downtown when, when, when I work, we always see all the blue bonnets uh, on the field. And that's so beautiful. But that's just the, the picture that the Lord is give us on this First Peter 1, 24. That all men are like grass. And the glory is like the flowers of the field. It's just wither in the afternoon. So watching the blue bonnet, I understand the meaning of all men are like grass and their glory is like blue bonnet according to a Texan Bible version. This is my, my it's not NIV, but it's a Texan Bible version. It's like blue bonnet. So now, I want to switch now. Where do you store up your treasure? So if you, if you store up your treasures uh, and you, you, you strive, you, you, you did a lot with your uh, all achievement, and those are all temporal and like, like uh, grass and like flowers in the field. So where do you store up your treasure? Matthew 6, 19 said, Do not store up your, for yourself treasures on earth where moth, moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Is that right? Where your treasure, that your heart. If your treasure is in your beautiful car that you just bought, then your heart will be there. If someone scratches, then you will be, uh, you cannot control yourself. You will be over, you will overreact and you will probably uh, fight or punch and so on because your treasure is in that car. What is your treasure? If your treasure is in your money, then you will fight for money 
and you will probably, uh, if you cannot get money, you probably try to steal. <coughs> all the big people, they steal. They stole from the, from the government, from the company, from the all, because that is your treasure. And your love will be there. Your heart will be there. That is your treasure. So now all these treasures, we know that is very, very temporal. It's just, just like grass and it's just like the flowers in the field. I want to give you a quiz. Which one is temporal and which one is, has lasting effect? College degree. Is that temporal or important? Or lasting effect? There is no right or true answer. But if you use your degree for his glory, it's no longer temporal. It has a lasting effect. A Christmas present. Is that temporal or it has lasting effect? Everybody agrees with me it's temporal probably. Is that right? Your, your Christmas gift. To be a homemaker, is that a, a, a temporal or a lasting effect? I think if you raise your kids to come to Christ, it has lasting effect, eternal effect. Uh, I have a, a stepmother, and uh, uh, she married my, my, my dad when we were, we have five boys and, and all uh, we are, I was, I think, six years old. But this mother brought us to Christ. Um, so on her funeral in Smarang uh, a couple of years ago, I said that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big appreciation to my mother because she brought us to Christ. That's the big gift that a mother can, can give to her kids. It has a lasting effect. Playing games, is that, is that temporal or uh, has the lasting effect? Has a, huh? <laughs> it's probably very interesting, right? Because you spend your love there and you spend like two, uh, until two or three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. Is that yes or yes? Is yes. Uh, we heard about a couple of, uh, I think last week, we heard about uh, a celebrity, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin says he was kicked out of a plane last week at Los Angeles International Airport after having words with a flight attendant over an addicting word game he was playing on his cell phone. I don't know, what, what did he play? Do you know, Kevin? Huh? I forgot. Oh, okay. I remember. You, you remember that story, okay. So Baldwin was kicked out of a flight for not wanting to stop playing games. It's so addictive, addicting, and, um, and so interesting. At that time, it was very interesting for him. Is it temporal or has a lasting effect? You, you can uh, answer your story, uh, yourself. I want to pick up a, a story. Uh, I want um, Peter to to uh, to show this video clip. Eddie, uh, can you can you turn on the uh, just quickly? Just okay. This is the 2011 CNN Hero of the Year. I was on assignment for CNN uh, to Ubud, Bali, to photograph an amazing lady called. Robin Lim. Robin, or fondly uh, called by the locals as Ibu Robin, meaning Mother Robin, is exactly that, not only for her family, but for hundreds of babies and mothers, young and old, in this part of Indonesia. The thing with Ibu is that uh, she's impossible to keep still in one place for more than a few seconds. She's constantly on the move. At any given time at a clinic, which isn't that big, there is at least 
you know, one or two people in labor. There is a constant stream of people wanting to see her, wanting to meet her. She's um, answering emails. She's running in to give birth. Then she goes over to a house to look after her own children. She just gives constantly. And that's the remarkable thing about Robin is that she's constantly giving. And she doesn't realize that because she just simply doesn't have time to sit down and think about what she's doing. It was a remarkable experience for me, especially when I was there with her, when she gave birth to this beautiful girl, uh, underwater birth to this beautiful girl. And uh, it's something that uh, I'll never forget. And I love these projects and I look forward to it every year. That's Robin Lim. My name is Palani Mohan. I'm a photographer with uh, Reportage by Getty Images. So this hero left the comfort of America and went to Bali to provide care for pregnant mothers. Because uh, a lot of mothers, the pregnant, pregnant women in the <laughs> developing nations, they are 300 times more uh, uh, have chance to, to die because of the complication of the, uh, uh, during labor. And she left, she left America and went to Bali to provide the care. So driven by compassion, I don't know if, uh, I believe that she, she is a Christian, but I don't know, if, um, uh, CNN doesn't say that, but I believe that's driven by compassion. As a midwife, she decided to help pregnant women in Bali and Aceh. She was chosen as the 2011 CNN Hero of the Year. So we have a limited time. Understanding the limit of time, we are bound by this temporary thing called time. We could not overpower time. With the limit measure of time that what we have, what are we going to do? When you have an amount of money uh, with, a, uh, with a limited buying power, say, say you have a $500, what are you going to use? You want to use that prudently, right? You want to use it wisely. You don't want to waste your, your $500. Uh, OK, I want to, I want to uh, buy uh, 10,000 baso, for instance. Just like that, yeah. You want to, you want to um, uh, do it wisely. How do you spend your your limited five hundred dollar? If you have a limited time on Earth, you want to use that also wisely. We know that uh, several of us also refuse just to sit back and relax, like Robin Lim. She went to Aceh, she went to, she went to Bali to help people uh, from our congregation. Ephraim also refused to sit back and relax. And he, he, helped, he helped the, the uh, <clears throat> uh, worship team and he can sing very well. He knows, he knows this is the vision that God gave him. That's why he, he refused to sit back and relax. Don't waste your time, sit back and relax. Just watching, playing games, for instance, or watching porn. If you are, for instance, you are, if you are active in, in, in Facebook, for instance, don't just spend time just hovering uh, Facebook, just enjoy. I, I, I have a friend in Jakarta, Pastor Lucas, and he is the pastor of, uh, he used to be our uh, youth in the, in the church where, where I was the, uh, uh, the supervisor uh, supervising all the young people. And now he pastored a, a church in Jakarta, church, uh, church Cathedral in Jakarta. I don't know if you, you heard about that in near uh, Tangerang, near Lipo Karawachi, there is a, a, a big church called Church Cathedral. And he said to me that he, he likes to go to Facebook also. But he wrote, he wrote something. He wrote, he wrote his thought. And, and by, by, re, uh, by writing to, to Facebook uh, audience, he got answer, he got, uh, he got reply, he got, he got questions too. And he, so he can, he can share his thought. So if you, if you think uh, doing face, Facebook, is that, is that temporal? Is that uh, wasting time? Or it has like, lasting effect? For him, it has lasting effect because he can share his faith, his, uh, his thought to the audience, 
to their, to their Facebook audience. So do, uh, I don't know how, how you want to uh, fill your, 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 your allotted times. There are so many whole, uh, people in the Hall of Faith. Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Joshua, Deborah, Samson, David, Esther, Daniel, John the Baptist, Stephen, all these are heroes of faith. What all these people have in common? First, they obey God in tough times. That's, I want to, sh I want to ask Peter to show that. Obey God in tough times. So th these are the, the, what uh, the, the heroes of faith have in common. Noah also obey God in tough times. Second, obey God in an unsure future. So it's completely trusting the Lord. The future is unsure. Abraham also, he was, he was uh, commanded by God to leave his country and go to a, an unsure future. Number three is sacrifice and hard work. He has to work for 120 years. 120 years to build the ark. That is sacrifice. He has to learn buoyancy. He has to, he has to work very, very hard. And he has to preach also at the same time. So in, probably in the morning he, he built and in the afternoon he preached. And he preached to deaf ears. So he has to work and sacrifice. These are, so now it's a challenge for us. How do you want to use your time? Those are ordinary people with an extraordinary uh, uh, faith to, to, to respond to God's challenge, to respond to God's command, to respond to God's vision. So I want to end this sermon with an offer of God's greatest gift to mankind at the salvation. If there is anyone here or, who have, or wherever this event can be watched, hasn't received Jesus as your savior. Romans 10, 9 said, this word is near you. It is in your mouth as in your heart. I will ask a worship team to come here. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is our Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Let's stand up together and let's sing this song.